one of the most successful quarterbacks to play professional football. Brett Favre has stared down some pretty tough-looking defensive linemen in his career. Now retired, Favre says something else scares him more. I don't remember my daughter playing soccer, uh, youth soccer, one summer. I don't remember that. Favre told a sports radio station he's experiencing memory loss and he fears it could be the result of concussions. And it's not just football. Nope, the Institute of Medicine has taken a closer look at concussion risks for young athletes and it finds the risk is high in other sports. In high school and college, football, ice hockey and lacrosse top the list for male athletes. For females, it's soccer, lacrosse and basketball. The report says too little is known about concussion risks for young athletes and it's not clear whether better headgear is an answer. Well, one thing the Institute is saying, concussions in youth sports are overall have skyrocketed over the past eight years. In 2001, the number of athletes aged 19 and younger who were treated for concussions and other sports and recreation-related traumatic brain injuries was 150,000. In 2009, that number rose to a quarter million. That's a spike of 66%. Now, the Institute of Medicine study suggests the only way to stop the damage is to break through what they call a culture of resistance from parents, coaches, and young players. The source of more information about concussions may lay in something that probably annoys you, especially this time of year. Two scientists are looking at a little pin-sized pest to find the key to curing concussions. When your fifth grader plays football, you expect head-on collisions. That doesn't mean mom, Trisha Adler, doesn't worry about her son. He's pretty tough, though. Concussion's going to be the worst. That's going to be something that's going to stick with them. Luckily, there's a lab looking into hard hits. But you might be skeptical of the science. <laughs> <laughs> With fruit flies? I don't know. So what we do is we take, take these flies. There's really only one way to test traumatic brain injury. When we let it go, some of them are on their sides, some are upside down. The building blocks of this bug's brain are the same as what's in our skull. So about 75% of the genes in flies um, are conserved in humans. So you can find a gene just like it in humans. So genetics pros David Wasserman and Barry Ganetsky made the concussion connection. And now as we learn this, uh, we can personalize the therapy, find the right therapy for the right individual. Studying the genes of these disoriented fruit flies, the pair could figure out who is most prone to the effects of brain injury before it even happens. There's no real quantitative measurement. That provides the opportunity to actually measure something. So it provides some sort of diagnostic tools, what, you know, biomarkers of traumatic brain injury. Humans with wings. Hey, bud. Another four quarters. Good game. Free of injuries. How do you think you'd react if you were slammed on the floor? <laughs> something Trisha is happy to leave to the flies. I hope his brain's a little bigger than that. <laughs> And scientists have been drawing the link between fruit flies and human genetics for decades now. But the scientists on this project say it took tackling this topic to really get people to pay attention. In the end, they just hope more athletes will be able to prevent concussions with the help of their research. Now, for those of us who are not genetic scientists, fruit flies are pretty much useless. In fact, they are downright annoying. Attracted to fruit, bread, even your toothbrush, Jenny Rosencrantz with the University of Maryland Extension Office offers this advice for getting rid of fruit flies. She suggests filling a small bowl with vinegar and a drop of dish soap. That's what I do. Place plastic wrap over the bowl and punch tiny holes in the wrap. The fruit flies are attracted to the vinegar. They get in the bowl through the tiny holes, but they can't escape and they eventually die. By the way, if you have ever wondered why we start seeing more fruit flies this time of year, experts say they're not just now starting to show up. They've been out all summer long, but the cooler temperatures are now driving them indoors. They want to get inside. Well, from one annoying flying creature to another, we're talking about bats. They have been associated with Halloween for a long time. Long enough, as a matter of fact, that they're somewhat misunderstood. So coming up next, WBOC's Joe Buno takes a not so spooky Halloween look at bats on Delmarva and why some people actually want them around. And one thing I want 
anything that will cut down the time I spend doing my hair each morning. <laughs> the air curler promises to do just that. How does it deliver? Well, you can see for yourself as we put it to the test. A little later on, we're in the kitchen making a fall butternut squash soup. Perfect for any chilly night, but this recipe has an added fall twist to it. Stick around, you'll see what that is. But first, we've been talking about your health. A big part of that is taking care of your bones. Dr. Oz tells us how. Make no bones about it. The human skeleton is remarkable. It constantly rebuilds itself throughout life. For bones to stay strong, you need a steady supply of regulating hormones and minerals. Upset that balance and you can get osteoporosis, a condition that causes brittle bones. So even a slight bump or a fall can cause a fracture. Here's how to shore up your bones. Get 1,200 milligrams of calcium and 1,000 international units of vitamin D, ideally through food and natural sunlight, but supplements can work too. Also try fermented dairy, like real yogurt, which can give you vitamin K2. And do weight-bearing exercises. Those are the ones that cause you to push, pull, or lift. And stop smoking, limit your alcohol to one drink a day, and skip the soft drinks. They all rob the body of calcium.